So Paddy, bespoke colour has been a thing in the industry for a long time. Most companies just send it out. Um, pros and cons to everything. But what are you doing with colour spray to help people that are thinking of starting to spray in house? Well, yeah, I mean, colour is obviously one of the the sort of top choices for something to be a <clears throat> a way to add value to a product. Um, you know, we whether it be through foils, composite door colours, bespoke composite door colours and things like that. Obviously, colour is a huge part of, of what we all do. Um, you are right, you know, a lot of people will choose to to send that out. There are trade sprayers out there who will take in other manufactured goods, take those in, apply the colour coats and then send them back out again, back to the manufacturers. And we feel, feel that that is a, you know, we want to encourage more people to be offering bespoke colours to their products. Um I believe, though, that there is a bit of hesitancy in people sending goods out of the factory. It's a, it's a process that they're not in control of. It's additional lead time. It's, you know, transporting items when we really want to be keeping it in the factory and not be sending around, chasing goods around different people's factories and things like that. So we've taken a look at the market to say, well, why, if you were a if trade fabricator, if you were a door fabricator, window fabricator, whatever it may be, looking for that next opportunity to add value to a product, why is this not something that could be adopted in-house to bring that control back in-house to reduce costs and to just be, like i said be in control of that 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 um be in control of your own destiny with it enjoy you know enjoy the margin that you can take from adding value without you know relying on a third party from taking their cut um and again we just want to encourage people to have that confidence in applying paint to understand the product understand the, the performance understand the needs to do that. So that's what we've been working on to encourage people to bring colour in-house. So from an investment point of view, um, I think a lot of companies, that it may not even be the money. It's like you say, it's just having someone to, to guide them through the process so they know they're doing everything right because it's it's not a straightforward process, no. but it is once you get into it and you know what you're yeah. doing. But so, I mean, the, the first stage is equipment. I mean, when we've spoken to you know large fabricators out there who don't currently apply colour in-house, you know, let's let's just have a conversation, you know, sort of, I can wave a magic wand, but what are the issues that I need to fix? And and number one that is an, is equipment. I don't know what I need to be able to apply paint. I've got a rough idea. I've seen a spray gun before. I've seen what a booth kind of looks like, but how how do I ensure that the, the setup that inevitably I'm going to invest in is built specifically for my business? And that's where we stand in. We've got a, a big track record of bespoke installations and, in, you know, big factories, small factories, making something work to the needs of the customer. And what we've got is a range of partnerships with companies like SATA, like uh, Schubert's Technical Services, to be able to provide the the best of the best in terms of finishing equipment. And, and basically just understanding the needs of the customer, you know, not just the needs of the customer in the now, but, you know, where are we going to be in six months once you offer this, you know, bespoke colour options for windows and doors and things like that. This will only grow your business. You know, the availability of wider colour ranges is it can only be a plus. You need to be thinking, well, what's the next stage? I may be doing, you know, 30 painted doors a week now. Can I cope when I get to 60? You know, because at the end of the day, we all want to be aiming for growth. Um, and any new system that you introduce, obviously, wants, you want to be making a return on. So it's about understanding, you know, the needs of your business, the needs of your business in the future and how we can build a, a bespoke package around that. And give you an idea of you know investment costs and and, and that, that capital investment on the note of investment and size is there sort of particular some companies i can imagine they go oh, we're not big enough to spray or we haven't got enough space to put a spray booth in or uh, you know ovens and things like that so what what kind of company sizes do you deal with we deal with smaller window fabricators um smaller door manufacturers or smaller door fabricators sorry you know whether it be from a slab whether it be from prep slab from one of the larger distributors um it, it really can vary depending on the you know your your customer set you know you may find that you are doing a lot of you know your your proportion of of foil colors may be massive and you know that you have an opportunity to be offering a more bespoke service um down to you know providing real sort of bespoke in, uh, bespoke solutions for composite doors and entrance doors Obviously, you know we've we've spoken a lot in the past about how um the the color of your front door is the sort of this is who I am, this is my personality, this is my home. Um, and I think people respond well to that. So it, it can be from, you know, smaller fabricators to larger manufacturers. It is a, there is a, a sort of a spectrum in there. 
and we have solutions for it. again somebody who may just think you know I really struggle with ancillary items you know on bespoke color options do I need to be buying an entire pack of stub sill for one house when it's going to be you know use only maybe 10 percent of the, the volume that's in a pack but you've had to pay and wait for the lead time for the bespoke foiling and things like that so there is really um there is a package that will suit everybody but we will consult on that and we'll be dead honest as well if we don't feel that you can take the benefit we're not going to push anyone or encourage people down an avenue that's not got a clear route to that repayment of the investment yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. I'm very fair. So that's equipment. You mentioned training then. So you offer training to, to anyone that wants it. Yeah. So essentially, the, there's a sort of two pronged approach to this that, um, again, speaking to people, some fabricators out there who use colour as a lot of the, uh, it's a big part of their business is, you know, training comes up as one of those, I don't know where I'm going to recruit a sprayer from. Uh, I don't know, you know, where that, you know, where that, that skill set's going to come from. Um, and that's just for the operators. The other side to it is that, Painting is not a skill set we have in-house, so it's going to be new to my managers, my supervisors. So we all need to have a sort of top-to-bottom understanding of this process because it's not something we want to go out half-cocked. So from our training centre here in, in Manchester, we've invested heavily, and over the last few years, we have a full commercial spray operation available as a demo site. We also have the use of facilities at Schubert to have, again, be able to show their full spray booth drying equipment as well. So... <clears throat> With our training centre, we've um, been working on a GQA accredited course. So we can come in, it is an accredited course that we hold here at the Manchester Colour Spray Training Centre. Uh, it's a day course where we cover off a lot of the, the theory of, um, of paint spraying for the, app, for the applicator, for the operator. Um, that then with a practical session in the afternoon, a bit of hands-on experience with using a gun, how to, uh, how to affect the or how to execute the training that you've done in the morning in a practical sense um which then culminates in a in a an invigilated exam at the end of the day so we have a full um qualification a full accreditation to go with that course um like i said that's for the operator we then have a, a wealth of materials and training um and, and experience in in the sort of the managerial side of things so you know what sort of legislative testing do we need to be doing what sort of periodic testing and things like that what are the what the parts that I need to implement aside from ensuring that I have a sprayer who is able to properly execute the job. So we, we look at it from both ways. It's not just about finding the operator to be able to do the job. It's about how you build a, a sense of responsibility and knowledge within the business as well so that, you know, we know that teams can be quite transient at times. And there's always a lot of, a lot of change in teams. It's about making sure that you can keep that, that core knowledge um, within the managerial team, within the supervisorial team, to make sure that we have a team able to properly execute the job so there's no variation in quality, in confidence, or in the volume of material that you can get through that spray booth. So what is the paint that you manufacture? So Colour Spray have always been a coatings manufacturer for specifically the window, door, and glass industry. We started with, people remember our, our infill resins, our uh, CADRAM resins, which then, you know, a long time ago, that then sort of developed into... Uh, resin paint systems for glass um, which then developed into the color spray range of products for pvc grp and powder coated aluminium so we've got a range of products dependent on application we're not just a sort of one 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 product show um, our original product that we produced was uh, color spray grp and that was specifically for larger composite door manufacturers and fabricators designed specifically for the application of GRP. It was very easy to spray, really high coverage, really easy to use. It was great for textured composite doors. Um, what we found though is that because of some of the, some of the uh, characteristics of providing a paint that is easy to spray onto composite doors, it didn't translate very well into flat PVC, just a difference in finish and sort of yield and things like that. So. We then developed it as more and more people wanted to paint flat profile color spray PVC. That was um, laid down a lot flatter, a lot smoother, very quick drying, uh, which was great for doing window profiles, but maybe not necessarily the, the best product on the market for composite doors specifically. So that was color spray PVC. Now we have a product that is a sort of middle of the road between the two, a sort of best of both worlds that you have uh, with color spray Fenico S. So it's really, really high coverage, 
um, really, really quick drying times and really easy to apply as well. So it's sort of the best of both worlds between Colour Spray GRP being our first one and Colour Spray PVC being that, that second development. Regardless of the products that we do, um, and we, we also have a, a water-based solution as well for where there may be a need for that, regardless of the products that we manufacture for different purposes, different applications, they all have the same performance essentially over. They're all held to the same account in terms of the performance over time and things like that. Right. So uh, so with all of that, you sort of, I, su- I suppose, most people know the cost of a length of profile and things. How do you sort of plan and forecast around, yeah. you know, a litre of paint? What, yeah. what do you get out of it? So um, I can get really into it in terms of the technicalities on paint, but essentially you have a, you know, a, a couple of parameters that you need to be concerned on with paint. And without going into too de- too much detail, you have a, um, a percentage solids, you have a thickness requirement that you need to, when that paint's dried. Um, and... Various paints have different various viscosities, but what is very clear is we have a really in-depth theoretical calculator. You know, this is how much that product requires in theory, and we can give that as a milliliter amount, as a pound amount, um, pound and pence amount, which is obviously great because then you can start to adjust for, um, you know, one liter of, you know, sorry, one meter of profile is going to take me, you know, this many milliliters of paint with this specific product, but a change to that product for some other characteristic that I like, you can still also cost it against that. So what, what we've done, we've got quite a granular costing system that, again, gives you the theoretical, but with the caveat that theoretical is purely that, there is a real-world application to it as well. There is wastage, there is overspray, there is these variables that are difficult to control. We train the guys to sort of reduce those variables, but ultimately we then can give a more more of a real world and it is a demonstrable real world figure as well, which is which is great. And I think a lot of our customers appreciate that because, you know, asking how you know how much is the litre of paint with that all sort of how long's a piece of string. You know, I could sell you, you know, a litre of paint that is one pound for a litre, but it only covers a square inch. Well how does that compare to my twenty-five pound litre that covers eight square, you know, eight square meters, for example? It's about having an understanding of what is this, what are the qualities of this paint, what is the performance of this paint, and how how is that, how much is that going to cost me per square meter of panel, per length of linear profile, whatever it may be. So, yeah, we, you know, not just the equipment investment. Obviously, people want to see that the process that they're adopting in-house is being fully costed for and you are making that return on investments as well. So for the people out there that, you know, there's horror stories out there, but what about the longevity of your products? Yeah, uh, you know, at the end of the day, there is a, I suppose, a natural fear that paint um, may not last as long as a foil, um, that, you know, it maybe not have, have the, the lifespan as intended. And what I would answer to that is that we've made products for a very, very specific reason, that is windows and doors. And, you know, we don't want paint to be fading. We want people to trust paint. At the end of the day, we think it's a fantastic tool for adding value to building products. Um, you know, before we get into color matches and things like that, the the key, you know, how long is this going to last? And what we have at Color Spray is the access to our own test center as well, our own test materials. So we do regular testing on, on on batches of material we will spray out samples we will do accelerated qv cycles which is really harsh weather environments um in terms of humidity and uv exposure and we benchmark that as well you know if we we want to make sure that the products that we make can stand up to the test of time because we you know we again we want people to trust paint so aside from the testing that we can do and we can share the data with you because obviously we're proud of the data, we're proud of the products we produce, we do then have a very comprehensive warranty document that outlines the expected performance over time, um, the guidance on how you give um, give aftercare information to your customers as well because at the end of the day, you know, this is a painted product. There, you know, there is some care that needs to go into it as well. But I think it's it just settles a lot of worries when you can see we have tested these products to, I'd like to say to destruction. We can't test them to destruction. We we do these very very intense test cycles, and we you know we're we're, we're there where we need to be, which is a a great sign. But that again, that's all things we can demonstrate. We we back up with a very very comprehensive warranty. We have our test materials that we can demonstrate, 
Um, and again, we, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't be producing paint if we if we didn't have the the trust in the in the performance, the longevity of it. So you mentioned you've got a training centre. Can anyone? Is it open? Can anyone just sort of wander in? Yeah. So we we've we've had this open for a while now. We've obviously gone through the the stages with the GQA in terms of getting this uh, accredited course set up. Um, but we are welcoming people in. Like I said, we do have a full commercial setup that is a spray booth, all of this required equipment, PPE, spray guns. We have our drying oven in there. So we have the capability straight away to be able to bring people in whenever and do live trials, live demonstrations. At the end of the day, we wouldn't expect any of our customers to buy equipment that we'd not already invested in ourselves. These are you know, incredible pieces of equipment that are built with efficiency and performance in mind. Um, and yeah, you know, whether you are a, an existing customer who wants to just maybe um, give a bit of refresh of training to your you, to your team, if you've got new train or you want a new team or you want a cross train team, to people who, who don't use us who are spraying, at the end of the day, a, a riding rising tide raises all ships, and we want to encourage better processes in the you know the painting of fenestration materials because ultimately, a better reputation of paint in the market is better for us as well. Um, and again, you know, it's a it's a great piece of equipment. And if you have if you have concerns with you know drying times, with wastage of material, with um, with sort of the application and things like that, and quality, it's something that we can address in the short term. But in on the Thursday, the nineteenth of September, we will be having a, a full open house day. Um, I'll be there in the training centre, in the Cold Spray Training Centre, demonstrating spray booths the equipment we can supply the ppe to make sure that operators are working safely the drying ovens to reduce bottleneck in, in the factory as well um and yeah we just encourage anyone anytime you know come down see us give us a call you know it's uh, it's a great facility um free tea and coffee we've got greg's over the road um it's a it's a great place um and yeah really excited to welcome people to uh, to come and see it thank you paddy